this video will tell you everything you need to know about the year seven topic of computer systems. To make your life that little bit easier, here and in the description below, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm gonna put the different timestamps so you can skip to whatever bit you need. Operating systems are pieces of software that run on your computer. The operating systems you've probably heard of are Windows by Microsoft, iOS by Apple and Android by Google. Operating systems perform six key tasks. They control the apps and programs. So all the apps and programs you've got installed on your computer system, the operating system puts the little icons on and you can click it and the operating system goes and opens up the app or the program. Operating systems manage the memory. So every single file you've got saved is managed by the operating system. So every single time you take a selfie, the operating system saves it for you. So when you're scrolling back through your gallery and you're looking back at all your selfies, it knows where to go to open them up. The operating system also manages the peripherals. Now peripherals is the correct way of saying all the things you can plug into a computer system. So this could be physically plugging it in with a wire or it could be connecting it via Bluetooth. So keyboards, mice, speakers, headphones, anything like that. What the operating system does is once you've connected it to your computer, it knows what it is and it lets it work correctly. Operating systems also provide a user interface. A user interface is a way of letting the user, so that's the person using the computer, interact with it. We'll do more about user interfaces in a little bit. Operating systems also allow multiple users to log on. So if you think about a network where many people are using the computer throughout the day, for example, a school or a library, different people can log in and log out. Most computer systems let you have multiple user accounts, but generally speaking, most people don't use this feature because they don't feel like they have to. It can be useful if you ever give your mobile phone, for example, to somebody else. If, for example, you've got a younger brother or sister and you let them play with your mobile phone, it might be worth setting them up their own user profile. This means that each user gets their own access to the storage so they can save their own files and they can also add their own apps and programs. This will stop them rooting through your stuff and maybe deleting stuff or accessing stuff that they shouldn't be. Operating systems also allow multitasking. Multitasking allows the user to be more productive. This means they might be doing more than one task on the same computer at the same time. And it's really important that these tasks are happening on the same computer at the same time. So for example, you might be watching YouTube videos whilst making notes in docs, you might be listening to music while surfing the internet. You might be on a phone call while making notes on the mobile phone as well. What's really important though, is that both of the activities have to be happening on the same computer. If you write, for example, doing my homework whilst watching YouTube, you could be doing your homework on paper. It needs to be really clear that both of the activities are happening on the same computer. User interfaces provide the user with a way of interacting with the computer. So interacting with the computer is clicking on it and using it. There are two main types of user interface. GUI, which stands for Graphical User Interface. GUI allows the user to interact with the computer using WIMP. Now WIMP stands for Windows, Icons, Menus and Pointers. So GUI has lots of pictures. You can click on the pictures. It's really straightforward and simple to use. The problem with GUI though, is that because it has got so many pictures, it can take up a lot of your computer's memory and storage, meaning your computer runs that little bit slower. The second type of user interface is command line. Command line is text-based and it allows the user to type in instructions. Now there are no pictures to help you out. And if you don't know what the instructions are, you can't use it. Because of this, you need to be a specialist to use the system. However, because there aren't any pictures, it takes up less storage and memory, meaning that the computer system will be more powerful and it will run faster. Compression is the method of reducing the size of a file. You do this because maybe you want to store more files. So sometimes you might run out of storage on your computer system. Instead of deleting old files, what you could do to make more space is compress them. There are two different ways of compressing files. Lossy compression means that when the file is uncompressed, some of the data has been lost forever. With lossy compression, because some of the data gets removed permanently, you can't really use it on text files because if you remove some of the text data, the file's not going to make sense anymore. The other type of compression is lossless. Lossless means that when the file is uncompressed, all of the data is still there. The problem with lossless compression though, is that the files tend to be much larger. Whereas with lossy compression, the files tend to be a lot smaller. So you can fit a lot more files on your storage device. Software is all the apps and programs that run on your computer system. You need software in order to be able to use the different apps and programs. We're going to look at six different file extensions and go over which types of software will open them up. 
The first one is image file types. So JPEGs and BMPs are the two image file types you need to know. If you click on a file and its file extension says JPEG, the piece of software that will open it up is image software. The sound file type that you need to know is MP3. If you click on a file that has an extension of .mp3, a sound player will open. Video file types include AVI and MPEG. If you click on a file that has one of these extensions, a video player will open. PDF stands for Portable Document Format. A PDF is a document that you can look at but you can't edit. So if, for example, you have finished your work and you don't want to make any changes to it and your teacher wants to email into them, you could always save it as a PDF. PDFs are much smaller in size than the original file. So it's a good way of saving lots of different documents. However, the biggest problem is, is once you've saved it as a PDF, you can't then go back and edit it. Zip files are lots of different files compressed together. Once you zip lots of files together, you can unzip them, so uncompress them. The biggest advantage of zipping files is that you can save a lot of zip files together on your computer and it will take up much less storage. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. This is the computer code needed to write websites. HTML controls the layout of web pages. So for example, when you're writing your HTML code, you get to say what text is gonna go where and where your images and buttons are gonna go. Every single thing on a computer is stored as binary. Binary is zeros and ones. So as much as when we're listening to sound on our computer, the computer can't hear the sound itself, it's actually processing lots of zeros and ones really quickly. When you record sound on a computer, the height of the sound wave is measured at regular intervals and this is then converted to binary. When the computer processes the binary, we hear the sound. It's very similar when it comes to storing bitmap images. Bitmap images are made up of pixels. Each pixel has its own colour and each colour has its own binary representation. The computer will save all of these different binary representations and when you click on your picture to open it up, it puts all the binary together and you see the image. But the computer only processes zeros and ones, it can't actually see the picture. Metadata is data about the data. Metadata about a song could include the name of the artist, the name of the song, how long the song is. Metadata about an image could include where the image was taken, if GPS was turned on. It could also include the height and the width of the image. So metadata tells us more information about the file we are looking at. When it comes to sampling sound and storing images, the more data you have, the better the quality the file will be. So the image will look more realistic because there will be more colour data and the sound will sound better because there are more sampling points. However, the side effect of this is that the more data you have, the bigger the file will be. Deciding how good of a quality your file needs to be is a playoff between how, between how it looks or sounds versus how long it takes to load. If it took a minute to load an image file, people are probably going to get bored and move on and look at something else. So even though having things at the best quality is usually what people are aiming for, it's not always worth it in terms of time spent. So deciding how good of a quality your image needs to be and how good of a quality your sound needs to be also needs to be played off against how long people are prepared to wait for it to load and you need to come up with a balance between the two. Mm -hmm.